Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of How I Built It. In today's episode, my friend Patrick Rowland and I talk through everything you need to think about when setting up an e-commerce site. So this is less asking how did you build that and more how would you build that. It's a great conversation and Patrick offers some great advice and insights into making an online store, especially with WooCommerce. We'll get into that in a minute, but first... Here is a word from our sponsors. This season of How I Built It is brought to you by two fantastic sponsors. The first is Liquid Web. If you're running a membership site, an online course, or even a real estate site on WordPress, you've likely already discovered many hosts that have optimized their platforms for a logged out experience, where they cache everything. Sites on their hardware are great for your sales and landing pages, but struggle when your users start logging in. At that point, your site is as slow as if you were on $3 hosting. Liquid Web built their managed WordPress platform optimized for sites that want speed and performance, regardless of whether a customer is logged in or logged out. Trust me on this, I've tried it out and it's fast, seriously fast. Now, with their single site plan, Liquid Web is a no-brainer for anyone whose site is actually part of their business and not just a site promoting their business. Check out the rest of the features on their platform by visiting them at buildpodcast.net slash liquidweb. That's buildpodcast.net slash liquidweb. It's also brought to you by Jilt. Jilt is the easiest way to recover abandoned shopping carts on WooCommerce, Easy Digital Downloads, and Shopify. Your e-commerce clients could be leaving literally thousands of dollars on the table, and here's why. 70% of all shopping carts are abandoned prior to checkout. Yes, you heard that right. 70% of shoppers never make it to checkout. And that's why you need to introduce your clients to Jilt. Jilt uses proven recovery tactics to rescue that lost revenue. It's an easy win that lets you boost your client's revenue by as much as 15%, and it only takes 15 minutes of your time to set up. Jilt fully integrates with WooCommerce, EDD, and Shopify, and you can completely customize the recovery emails that Jilt sends to match your client's branding using its powerful drag-and-drop editor, or by digging into the HTML and CSS. Even better, Jilt's fair pricing means your clients pay only for the customers they actually engage, and you get to earn a cut of that through Jilt's partner program. Whether you have clients that process one sale per month or 10,000 sales per month, be the hero and help them supercharge their revenue with Jilt. Check them out at buildpodcast.net slash Jilt. That's buildpodcast.net slash J-I-L-T. And now, on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of How I Built It, the podcast that asks, how did you build that? Or in today's case, how would you build that? Today, my guest is Patrick Rowland. He is an e-commerce educator guy. (laughs) Uh, We were talking about this right before we started recording. Uh, I asked him what his title wanted to be, and then I forgot the end after (laughs) educator already. So e-commerce educator guy. Patrick, how are you today? You know, I'm doing really good. I'm on my second cup of coffee, so it's just a good, it's just a good day. Very nice, very nice. Uh, it is later in the day for me, but I'm still like I nurse my coffee. This is like still my first cup. Oh no! Yeah, I know. It's no, I know. It's like really cold now and stuff too. But I'm generally a peppy guy anyway. So I'm really excited for today's episode because we're kind of breaking from the normal format of hey, tell me about a thing you built. Uh, instead. Hmm. Patrick, you're very well versed in, in WooCommerce. Would you say that? Yeah. 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 Well, so yeah. So just and just yes, I can say just the the simple word yes, but I can also explain it in that uh, I was just thinking about this the other day. I used it as so first I used it for an agency and I built sites for clients, and then I was a support person at Woo, and then developer, and then product manager, and then I built extensions for them and for myself. And then I wrote books about it and created courses and I created their conference. So I think I'm like almost at like eight or nine different roles relating woo stuff. So I've, I've got a good, 
impressed. Yes, yes. I'm really glad you went through that rundown because I didn't want to like try to remember it from the last time we spoke or anything like that. So I'm really glad you went through that (laughs) rundown. So I'm really excited about today's topic, right? Uh, You went through uh, your kind of credentials for uh, being a WooCommerce guy. And today we're going to talk about uh, how would you build your online shop with WooCommerce. And we came up with a pretty interesting concept for this, right? Uh, it was like, yeah. Yeah. So, so it was actually literally something I was Googling yesterday. My partner, she's, we're big, big, big into like comic books and nerdy TV shows and all this stuff. And we were like, God, and she loves plants. And so she wants to like merge nerdiness and plants. And we were like trying to find nerdy pots and we could not find, we could find a couple, but there weren't many. And I was just thinking if someone had a store that was just, uh, you know, nerdypots.com, mm-hmm. you could make a killing with all the people that have that intersection in their life. So nice. like she, w- she would love like a, like a Bulbasaur that has like a little back where like little plants could grow out of it. That'd be awesome, right? So Yeah, very cool. So like, a re- like not like a chia pet, but like a real plant, like a real pot. Like a planter, yep. Yeah, cool. Cool. So if any, if some enterprising young person or older person listening to this episode wants to make that site, we're going to blueprint that site for you. Yes. So let's start with this. We have our idea. Uh, what kind, like, how would you start researching this? Like, like, how do I know that this is a good idea for me to sink my time into? Okay. So th- there's a whole giant thing we could talk about with like choosing a product, but basically if you know that there's a need and you can know that there's a need by either talking to people around you or by doing, you know, Google SEO, SEM type research to see how many traffic queries there are a month, that type of thing. Or you can see what, there are some nerdy potted plant things on Etsy that we found earlier, but there's only a couple. So as long as you know that there's, it's something people want, you can, that's the first step. Like, do people want it? If so, proceed. Then you need to make sure that uh, you can make money on it. So that means you need to, let me, I'm trying to think of a good example here where like, if the, if the cure for cancer was $500 billion, everyone wants it, but no one can afford $500 billion. So right. it, that's, not a, that's not a viable option. And there's right. lots of things like that. Like you want to sell artisanal coffee, people want it, but they're not willing to pay $60 a bag, right? So totally. you just need to make sure that you can make it at a price that people want it at. And my, my rule of thumb is you need to be able to sell it for twice what you bought it for. So if you're selling, co- if, you're, or if you're saying planters, let's Let's stay with the same example. If you can buy them for $5 a unit and people will purchase them from you at $10 a unit, that's probably something you can make money on. Nice. I love that. So because uh, it's it's not enough to just ask if people want it, right? If I ask right. you if you wanted some crazy thing, you'd probably be like, yeah, sure. I want that. <laughs> totally. Totally. And, and like one of the classic examples, I mean, and so many people have have said this in other circles, but like just because someone says they'll buy it is different than them buying it. And so, right. some people, when they're doing validation, they will only count validation when someone actually pulls out their credit card to make a pre-order. Like some people are, because there are a lot of things that people like, hey, Joe, would you buy uh, my Batman mug? You're probably going to say yes, just to be nice to me. Yeah. So I like it, Batman and mugs, like, right? Yeah. 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 But yeah, but when the rubber hits the road and you're like, okay, that'll totally be 20 different. bucks. I'm like, I don't know. I'd rather spend 20 bucks on like a Mickey Mouse mug. Totally. Yeah. Cool. I really love that. I fall into that trap a lot. Or like, uh, you know, do you think this is a good idea? I've started developing this thing. Do you think it's a good idea? Yes. Oh, people, people think it's a good idea, right? At least Mm -hmm. me and someone else. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to sink all my time into this. So on that, on that same token, you know, how much time do you spend like researching this? Do you like create a focus group or just like throwing up a landing page yeah. or what? You know yeah. what? So everyone is totally different. And you know, this totally depends on you. And, and also like if your startup costs are like, you need to spend $500 on product to get started. That's relatively small. But if you need to spend 50,000, you know, then you should do a lot more research, right? Right, right. So, so obviously the answer is it depends, but let me try to give you a little bit more uh, clarity there. I, I've always used my intuition with the stuff that I do. So I've never done any SEO work on my own site. I've, uh, I just say, I had this problem with WooCommerce. Here's how I solved it. I assume other people will want it. And some of those blog posts are flat and no one ever clicks on them, but some of them are great. So I just use my intuition and see whatever is is the right thing. But when you're investing money and not just writing a blog post, then you do want to do some research. So I would, I would spend, I mean, people spend months, people do spend months or years. You could probably get away with a solid day of research. If it's Mm -hmm. a small thing, that's a small investment. Try to find other products that are similar. Try to find influencers in your space who have podcasts or blogs or, or something and they talk about, oh, wouldn't it be cool if? 
And then try to find like marketplaces where people might be selling this stuff. And if you can find some traction or if you can find online groups where people are talking about this, that's probably, that's some amount of traction. It's not exact numbers, but that's something to get started. Yeah, it's at least a group that you can now kind of market to to get kind of an initial reaction. Yeah, Yeah, and and keep in mind the internet is such like, before the internet, you could not make money selling cat trees for a living. Now right. that the internet exists, there are probably businesses that only sell superhero themed cat trees. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. there's, you can be so niched down and still make a killing as long, as long as there's that super tiny passionate group of people that believe in your product. Yeah. And again, that's an, another really great point, right? You, I mean, if you play your cards right and you market to the right group of people, you have virtually infinite reach right Mm -hmm. everybody who is interested in superhero cat trees right Uh, right so that's or nerdy planters right you know pokemon nerdy planters or superhero nerdy planters things like that so that's really cool so you talked a little bit about initial investment and i i imagine that that's also going to be part of your research right so uh we're setting up a woocommerce shop wordpress and woocommerce Mm -hmm. are obviously open source and both free what are we looking at for a cost for setting up this online shop I mean, I, okay, so so some costs that you cannot escape no matter what. You're going to have to pay something for hosting, you know, mm-hmm. let's say 15, 20 bucks a month. Uh, you're going to have to get a domain name, you know, 15 bucks a year. WooCommerce itself is free, so that's awesome. Uh, you're going to need an SSL certificate. So those used to cost money, but now that Let's Encrypt has come out, that, those are free. And you can usually just press a button in your host and they'll install right. it for you and do all that jazz. I think that's all you need bare minimum. Oh, you're going to need a payment gateway. That's uh, Stripe and PayPal are both free. Uh, I should caveat caveat that if this is your first time to e-commerce, every payment gateway takes a super tiny cut of all sales, but the the service itself is free other than the super tiny cut. I mean, that's seriously about it in terms of hard costs, but there's e-commerce can be so, you can spend $50,000 on 20 million extensions that all do really cool stuff. And then a custom built blank, you know, affiliate system or this or this or this. So you could spend anywhere from, let's say $200 a year at, at the minimum for hosting a domain and something uh, up to, I mean, I, I think some of the bigger web, some of the bigger e-commerce sites I've built when I worked at an agency were 20 plus. So that's realistically what I think you could spend. But I honestly, what's so cool about WooCommerce and, and the, as I said, I work with my intuition a lot. So I just do stuff and see if it works. So start with a super tiny store, you know, you start marketing, see if people actually come from Pinterest or Google or wherever to your site, see if they buy it. Oh my God. Now they start buying stuff. Now you start investing in the store. You get a better email software. You start with MailChimp, which is free. And then you upgrade to something that's better. There's so many things that you can upgrade and invest in and get your customers that used to buy just once to buy them a couple times a year and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to, I want to parse out something that you just Mm -hmm. said, which is, about hosting, right? So mm-hmm. uh, 15, 20 bucks a month for hosting. Yeah. I've seen hosting for, you know, let's say, I don't know, 10 bucks a month or five bucks a month. Why shouldn't I just go with the $5 a month hosting? Cool. Good question. So, you know, what's interesting is I think my answer depends based on whether you're selling online or whether it's just a regular blog. Right. In that, uh, well, my answer is kind of the same, but here, here's the thing. When you're selling online, you need to keep, like you have literal transactions. You have to calculate sales tax just in case someone in your own state buys your, your thing. God forbid you lose like your server crashes and you lose all that data. And now you owe the government money and you don't even know how much because it was all recorded in commerce, but your host crashed and you're, you're, you're stuck. So you cannot, not, not go with the host that, or you either need to have a host that backs up your data or you need to set up your own service that backs up your data. I've always used WP Engine just because they were one of the first good hosts that appeared in the WordPress, managed WordPress space. Uh, and they do daily backups. So with daily backups, I'm pretty much covered. You can always take it a step further and get even me and I have a couple other things that I could use, but a good host will back up your site for you daily. Uh, and that, that for me is actually the most important thing. There's lots of other amazing features like a testing site. But for mm-hmm. me, the most important feature is daily backups. Yeah. And daily backups are so important. And just like that, uh, you know, a better host is likely not going to crash on you, right? If if one day like a thousand people come and buy your nerdy planters, you don't want your site going down because now you're losing revenue. You're literally losing revenue there, right? Right. So if you're going to, if there's one thing that you're going to splurge on, Patrick, I think you would probably agree with me here. Hosting should be that one thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think so. 
So you know what's funny is I don't think I've had like my site crash anytime, any time recently in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. but I have had some like weird niggling issues, just like some, some little thing that bugs you're like, why is this thing not quite working? Right. And to be able to reach out to someone in support and have them actually answer you is, oh, yeah, so good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. uh. Hey everybody, I want to take a moment here to tell you about Event Espresso. If you need an excellent event management system for your WordPress site, look no further than Event Espresso. The out-of-the-box event registration and ticketing plugin for WordPress is now powering over 40,000 event websites, $100 million in ticket sales per year. If you need a stable, well-built, and highly supported event ticketing platform for your WordPress website, look no further than Event Espresso. They're a great supporter of the show. They make an incredible product. You can check them out over at buildpodcast.net slash events. That's buildpodcast.net slash events. Now, back to the show. Yeah, that's. I, I really just wanted to touch it's, on that because good hosting is so important. Yeah, and I... Think WP Engine is it 15, 20 bucks a month for their lowest? Maybe it's a little higher than that. But like, since everything else is basically free, we're talking two, three hundred bucks a year for a right. minimum, minimum for a whole online business. Right. Which, uh, you know, twenty years ago, you need a brick and mortar mm -hmm. store, right? Like, <laughs> totally. I mean, oh yeah, the startup costs used to be insane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Awesome. So yeah. let's let's actually get into building it now. Yeah. We have our hosting. We have our domain. Let's say that we've installed WordPress. Where do we go from here? How do I make a store? Cool. So we already mentioned WooCommerce. That WooCommerce is one of the best options. I just want to be fair. There are other players in the WordPress space, but I mostly have experience with WooCommerce because it's the biggest one. Uh, but you just go into your plugin menu. You click at you click or type in WooCommerce. You install it. That is the basic thing that you need. Um, when you go through the welcome wizard, they will prompt you to install Jetpack. You can, uh, and I recommend that you do that. It might be, and that they, they have weird phrasing and they're changing their terminology. It might also be called WooCommerce services and a couple other stuff like that. But install Jetpack, which will let you connect to WordPress.com and get a whole bunch of free stuff. So Photon loads your images faster. There's some spam protection in there. There's a whole bunch of stuff. There's also relating to WooCommerce specifically, they just installed, oh boy, I forget the name of it, but it's a uh, free, sh not free. It is, <laughs> it is free live rate shipping. So that means you can get a quote on exactly how much it'll cost you to ship, you know, your Bulbasaur planter from point A to point B, like $3.24. And they'll like, they figure out how big the box is, how big the package is, and they send all that data to USPS. It returns to your site. Then the user sees it and does, does all the magic. That used to cost like 50, 75 bucks a year. Now it's built into the, that plugin for free. So that's cool. So uh, once you have that, you have all your shipping set up. WooCom when you're going through the installation process, they'll prompt you to import tax rates. So that's basically set up. You should look into what Nexus means. It, it's basically where you have a business presence. So like, and this will vary state by state. So please don't quote me. <laughs> or We, we are not lawyers or accountants. Yes. <laughs> th thank you. <laughs> yeah. But basically Nexus is where you have a business presence. So that means if you have an office or an that's where you have a business presence. So my, my home office is in Colorado. Even if I moved out of Colorado, as long as I still have that home office, I have Nexus there and I have to pay taxes there. So you're going to want to collect taxes there. You just click a couple buttons and WooCommerce does the rest. They'll prompt you to do payment, which is I recommend Stripe and PayPal to start. Stripe is for credit cards. So people can just enter their credit card number. Oh, here's the thing that people always stumble on your site never touches the credit card. So because of JavaScript wizardry uh, and iframe wizardry, they're basically entering the credit card number on like an iframe, which is a piece of Stripe's website basically. And that goes directly to Stripe servers. They verify that all the money's there, that it's the right credit card number, it's not expired, blah, blah, blah. It returns a like yes, no to your site. So you never see the credit card number. You don't need to worry about PCI, right. Compliance, PCI compliance right. issues. Yeah. Um, there, there is technically a form you should, it's a one page form that says, I don't handle it, uh, that you're, you're supposed to fill out. But yeah, that Stripe does that. PayPal is good just because so many people use PayPal as fun money. I totally do that where my PayPal money could be like, sometimes I look at my PayPal account, I'm like, how, what am I doing with this, this huge amount of money in there? This is, abs I should, I should buy a giant toy with this. Um, <laughs> So definitely have PayPal on there for that reason. Now that I'm going to, I'm going to stop you right yeah. there real quick. That's, I want to ask you, well, so with Stripe, with PayPal, 
the analogy that I thought about is essentially like you, you have an armored car guy, right? Okay. You have a guard, he goes into the bank. The mm-hmm. bank hands him money. He's uh-huh. handling the money and bringing it to his armored car, right? Uh-huh. A, a bank employee is not carrying all this money right. to the outside world, right? Oh, I like that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, I like that analogy. Yeah, so uh, you you definitely want your armored car guy cause, because, uh, like Patrick said, PCI compliance is a whole other thing where, like, you're totally on the hook if, like, yes. credit card fraud happens on your website. <laughs> like, yep. so. Yeah, so that – and that actually happened at a company I worked for a few years ago where they – basically someone hacked their website and then because they weren't doing it in a smart, cool way, they could read what people are typing in Mm -hmm. and then they stole those credit card numbers. And that company that I worked for was responsible. They had to pay a a fine, which is relatively small for how big the company was, but still several thousand dollars. Right, right. So don't do that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And then uh, with with having Stripe and PayPal, I mean, when I Mm -hmm. launched my shop, I did it with just Stripe. I figured I, I will give people like one clear option but the very first, email, like within 10 minutes of launching was, do you have PayPal? So I just turned it on like real quick. Thank you, WooCommerce, for enabling me to do that. Yeah. But it, it's just funny. Like I was like, people, they'll be able to pay with a credit card. Who cares? But like you said, PayPal is fun money for a lot Pe- of people. People it's not care. Real money. Yeah. yeah. And so, so what I will say is PayPal gives a little bit more control to the consumer. So like the consumer can very easily sort of say, uh, cancel a payment. I mean, you basically need to provide no proof. Um, and so consumers really like it for that reason. Of course, as a business, now let's say you're selling $5,000 pieces of furniture. You do not want to give the consumer just a quick, easy button that you basically have no recourse against. Right. And if, like doing that through a credit card is possible, but just more steps and more complicated and you can com- contest it. And, right. You have to like call somebody usually. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's cool. So I, I stopped you right at payment yeah. gateways. Yeah. I, but I mean, we're, we're basically done at that point, at, at that point. So we, get, we did shipping, taxes, payment. Those are the big ones. And then you just need to start entering your products. So in your WordPress admin, you go to products, you click add new. Yeah, and, and if you've never used WooCommerce before, it looks just like the, or very similar to the edit post page. So there's the title up top, there's the description beneath that. And then beneath that, there's a couple extra fields for like price and how much does it weigh, which helps you determine shipping costs and a couple extra things. But, and if, of course you want to upload your image, but then you're, that's, that's it. When you have your, once you have your, and I should say, this is something that people forget is that you need to spend a little bit of time doing copywriting and having nice product photography. I'm not a photography expert, but even non-experts like myself can recognize when there's bad photography. If you spend two, three hours looking at how to light a product, uh, just, you can Google this, you can find some free courses, you can find or paid courses, whatever. Just look at like how to light a product. And then you can use your iPhone and take a, it's going to be 10 times better when you spend a little bit of time and maybe a little bit of money on lighting uh, your products and taking nice photos of them. Um, Absolutely. There's like this, uh, like this lighting box that you can buy on Amazon for like 50 bucks. Oh, cool. Love it. Yeah. Right. So that's, so copywriting and photography, always an afterthought for me, but super important. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. and, And while I'm on copywriting, one thing that people do not get about humans is that they are emotional. So I think, I think this comes from Brene Brown, but I could be wrong with the quote. So please don't hate me if I get the quote, quote wrong. But she says, people always think that human beings are thinking machines that occasionally feel, but we're actually feeling machines that occasionally think. And I really like that because we totally think we're always or like totally logical, except for maybe like two minutes a day where we're upset or angry or whatever. We are almost always driven by emotion of like, I wish I looked like that. And then you buy clothes or I wish, right. I wish people thought I was that cool. And then you'd buy this toy or this, this whatever. So you would be surprised at how emotional we are. Uh, so you need to write like, this is how you feel after you buy the product. I love that. This is how you feel. And that's, I mean, yeah, I think I'm like a logical guy, but man, I'm also an Italian guy and Italians are very <laughs> emotional people. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And so it's, that's, that's a really great point to touch on. So we have our shop set up. What theme should I use for my WooCommerce oh. shop? Good question. So you can use, first of all, you can use anything, but I think a great place to start, they have a free theme called Storefront. It is a great place to start. So it's one of those things where like a lot of WordPress themes are sort of gray by default, but then you just go into the customizer under appearance, customize, and you just pick whatever brand colors you have and it'll look pretty good uh, to, as it'll be a pretty darn good start because you can customize the header and the sidebar and you know, all, all the footer and all the stuff. I think that's the best place to start. 
you can, if you want, spend, you know, 50 to hundred bucks on a premium theme. The nice thing is one thing I like about premium themes is they're usually a one-time purchase mm -hmm. and you can use them for a couple of years. And then if you want switch to something new or keep it or build your own, if you ever, you know, if your store takes off, then you yeah. build your own if you want. Right. Yep. And, and just going back to that point, you know, yeah. using storefronts at first, uh, copywriting is, is going to be more important really than as long as your oh. site doesn't look like crap. Yeah. The copywriting is going to be the thing that makes the person buy, not the design of the site. So absolutely. The cop yeah. So like when someone lands on the site, one, it should load fast. Another reason to get a good host. So make sure it loads relatively fast, uh, have good product photography, have good headlines. And then as well, the cop, the main copywriting, and that will actually draw people in. They'll actually click onto your product pages and then those are serious chances they'll buy it. Actually, while I'm on that, just to set standards, a typical conversion rate is going to be one to 2%. So if you are, have a brand new store, once your mom has already purchased, those purchases do not count <laughs> against your average. Once your mom or your best friend has purchased, if you get a hundred people to your site and one person buys, that's actually a great start. Like th that is serious expectation. Sometimes people need to come back multiple times or it just wasn't for them or whatever. 1% is a solid start. And if you're an awesome e-commerce com e company, you might eventually get to two or three or maybe four if you're crazy. Man. Yeah. So, so that's a very telling number, right? Cause you know, in your head you think I'm launching my shop, I'm opening the doors, people are going to come buy my stuff now. Yeah. How do I, how do I get a lot of people? You know, I, I mean, we're coming up on time, but I think this is a really important uh, thing. So I love this topic, which is why in the last couple, so this is what I've been focusing on for the last year or so. I made this thing called, can I pimp my thing? I was going to ask you at the end. So yeah, let it go. Yay! Yeah. Yeah, let it um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I made this thing called Liftoff Summit last year, which was basically online marketing for new, store or for new store owners. And it's basically, here's what Facebook does. Here's what Instagram does. Here's what Pinterest does. And the, I'll try to summarize this and make it relevant for your audience. You, need, you don't need to do all of these things. I think a lot of people get stuck going, okay, I need to be on Facebook. I need to be on Twitter. I need to be on Pinterest. I need to do this. And you do not. Just pick two to three places where your product, where your people can find you somehow. And it doesn't have to be a social network, but that's one option. And then just start marketing to those people, start testing what headlines work, get the most reson uh, resonance, people respond to it. Start seeing which ones have the most click-through rates. But you do need to do something. I think everyone thinks that like, that if you have an online store, people will just show up. That is totally not the case. You need to spend a lot of time marketing it. Uh, I spent, for Liftoff Summit, I spent, for marketing the marketing event, I spent probably, oof, maybe 100 hours marketing it. Probably not quite that much. I spent a lot of, at least of hours marketing it. And that got 400 users. And that was for a free event. So like, imagine trying to make, if I had to make people pay from the get-go, maybe dozens of hours for maybe 40 users. You know what I mean? Right, right, yeah. So it, it, it takes a, it's a long time. It's a long process and you can't just, I think a lot of people give up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear a lot of, uh, well, I tried this and it didn't work for me, but you know, the, how many people actually give it the old college try? You know, it takes, yeah. it takes time. So what's cool is that because we're focusing on WooCommerce, I want to give people the one thing that I think works really well for WooCommerce and that's content marketing because your WooCommerce is built on the best, the most flexible content marketing platform out there. You should definitely look into content marketing, which is basically writing a lot of blogs that will help your users. If it's okay, Joe, I can recommend, I can give away some of those content marketing lessons from Liftoff Summit away. Oh yeah, cool. that'd be amazing. I'll, yeah. Cool. Well, I, I'll put together a landing page. Let's just do liftoffsummit.com slash how I built it. All one word. Is that cool? Perfect. Yep. And I'll cool. link so, that in the show notes. Yeah. Cool. So I'll, I'll, I'll put together, I have two, I have a couple talks on content marketing. I'll put those in there. Uh, if you just sign up, I'll send them to you. You can watch them and it, it's, it's so powerful. Over the last couple of years, my personal blog generates generates tens of thousands of hits a month, and I do I have no paid marketing. I just wrote about stuff that interested me and it interests other people, and it drives a lot of traffic. Nice, that's amazing, and and uh, we might have to have you on for like a follow up because this is this is I mean this is a thing that uh, creates trust, right? Like you're you're mm. teaching people stuff, they trust you, and then they'll inherently trust your brand. I, okay. So I just, I also had a session on trust building at liftoff. Did you watch that? Oh, it was so I don't, good. I don't think I did actually. Oh, it was with Chris Lamb. It was really good. Um, oh, of course. Building, yeah. Okay. Building trust is such uh, an important thing. And basically it's the, 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 the core that I got out of it yeah. is consistency. Like you just need to be there consistently. You can't just try it for a week and then give up. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Building trust is hard. 
Awesome. I love that. Cool. So, well, we're going to, so, I mean, we're at time, so let's wrap up. Uh, you've given us so much, but I always like to ask at the end, do you have any trade secrets for us? Any trade secrets? Oh my goodness. I was not ready for this question. I should have been. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think my trade secret is patience. I'm, I'm just going back to all the stuff you're we just saying. A lot of stuff, uh, I don't want to say that. I, I think a lot of people give up without being persistent and you need to keep trying and trying and trying. Sometimes, uh, yeah. it, sometimes you need to know when to give up, but a lot of the time it just takes a little bit longer to get going than you hear in the, I wrote one blog post and generated $50,000. I'm not telling you about all the stuff that did before that, right? Yeah. Ex- I mean, I, I love that. Cause I mean, again, you hear about the overnight excess, yeah. success, but you didn't hear about all the other nights that they were not successful. Right. So absolutely. Awesome. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for joining me today. I really loved this conversation. You're welcome. This has been a blast. Thanks again so much to Patrick for joining me to talk about building a great online store. This is stuff that's worth thinking about for both you and your clients. So uh, I definitely have a lot of great takeaways uh, and a lot of show notes that you can find at howibuilt.it slash 64. And speaking of online shops, thanks again to our sponsors, most of whom specialize in doing online commerce. So make sure to check out Liquid Web for managed WordPress hosting. I use them on all of my important sites, including this one. They are that good. And they recently rolled out managed WooCommerce hosting too. So talk about reliable hosting. Liquid Web is where it's at. They are at buildpodcast.net slash liquid. If you want to save your clients or yourself money through recovering abandoned carts, check out Jilt. They are over at buildpodcast.net slash jilt. Make sure to increase those conversions to 1% or 2%. And finally, if you need amazing event management for WordPress, check out Event Espresso over at buildpodcast.net slash events. For all of the show notes, head over to howibuilt.it slash 64. Finally, if you like the show, head over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and a review. It really helps people discover us. And until next time, get out there and build something.